I'm Allison Prophet, Managing Editor of BioIT World Magazine. I'm here with Renee Kenny, Director of Scientific Research at Genstruct. Renee and her colleagues won a BioIT World Best Practices Award last year for causal network modeling with Sertra's Pharmaceuticals. And this February, Renee will be one of six speakers at the Best Practices Short Course at the Molecular Medicine Tri-Conference in San Francisco. Renee, first of all, tell me a little bit about Genstruct. Um, I know the systems biology space is very competitive, so tell me what sets Genstruct apart. So Genstruct has a unique take on systems biology. Um, we use what we call a causal network modeling platform, and we apply this platform to understand the mechanism of action of drugs, as we did in this case with Sertris. Um, we also apply it to biomarker discovery, drug safety testing, and we're now moving into the personalized med medicine field. Um, so what we actually do is we use uh, empirical transcriptomic or proteomic or any type of omic modality and what we can use, uh, what we can do with this causal network modeling platform is, is use it to really understand what are the upstream signaling networks that actually govern these changes that we may observe in our omics data. So one of the problems that we have right now with omics data is that, you know, oftentimes you may generate thousands of data points and it's very difficult to understand. So uh, it's much larger than the cognitive space of the human brain. So what this platform does is it actually scales it back. Um, so then scientists can actually look at it and derive a model of what's actually happening in, in a space that's actually ab we're able to really understand. In your winning best practice entry, you partnered with Sertris Pharmaceuticals, who uh, has their own formulation of resveratrol, which is a much lauded um, compound in red wine. Is the project that you worked with on Sertris connected at all to resveratrol? It, it absolutely is. Um, as you said, uh, Sertris has its own formulation of resveratrol, and that was actually part of the project that we did with them a few years ago. Um, so. What they actually also have is another compound which activates the same molecule, uh, CERT1, as resveratrol does. And this other compound called CERT1720 is a much more potent activator of CERT1. So the idea here is that resveratrol has gained much popularity because um, it has many of, the, of these beneficial health effects such as lowering cholesterol, um, improving you know, sensitivity to insulin, um, and even may have other potential therapeutic effects in cancer and inflammatory diseases. And so, um, you know, really one of, the, one of the most striking things that resveratrol does is it, is it mimics a pathway of caloric restriction. And caloric restriction has been shown to exhibit these beneficial effects um, that we talked about earlier in organisms such as mice uh, and worms, et cetera. Now, if we could figure out how, how to actually mimic this pathway without having to actually restrict our diets, then that would be really great. So, um, Sertris is lucky enough to have discovered this, this compound uh, that actually activates CERT1 uh, more potently than resveratrol, because I think right now you have to drink quite a lot of red wine in order to, to really, um, really mimic the effects of caloric restriction. So, tell me about the, um, your entry that won the award itself. So what, what Sertris was very interested in doing was really understanding the mechanisms of action downstream of CERT1 activation for their compound CERT1720. Um, and one of the benefits that Genstruct has to offer is that we, we can, um, our modeling platform will actually model this behavior much more quickly than you'd be able to do in the lab. So they came to us and in a two-month project, we were able to really understand um, what the mechanisms of CERT1 activation were with their compounds, both 501 and 1720, and we found that it was able to decrease inflammation, it was able to mimic caloric restriction, um, and it was able to improve metabolism as well. Excellent. So um, the same month that you won the award, in August of 2008, uh, Sertris Pharmaceuticals was acquired by GlaxoSmithKline. So you went from having a small pharma partner to a very big pharma partner. How has that changed the working relationship? That's correct. Um, Sertris is now part of GSK. Um, it actually hasn't changed our relationship with them at all. Uh, I still actually consider them very much uh, a small biotech company that just works under the larger umbrella of a pharmaceutical company. Um, also, we've actually worked together with other groups at GSK for the last five years or so, so that we've done multiple projects with them um, and already have a very good working relationship with, with both the big pharma as well as a small biotech company with them. 
Now, in, um, on February 24th, you will be speaking at the short course at the Molecular Medicine Tri-Conference. The short course is entitled Best Practices in Translational Medicine, Drug Discovery, and Informatics. Can you tell us a little bit about what you'll present there? Well, what we're going to show are, are really the details of our, our modeling findings, um, and we'll show you really what the mechanisms are of CERT1 activation by these two compounds. And I think one of the, the great things that we're, we were able to do in our collaboration with CERTRIS is, is, you know, once we had the model, they were actually able to go back into the lab and test different elements of it to actually show that the model was correct. So we'll be presenting those data at the conference. Renee, thank you. Um, if you would like to learn more information about the Tri-Conference itself to get updated agendas or to register for the conference or the short courses, please go to www.tri-conference.com. If you'd like to learn more about BioIT World Best Practices Awards, our 2009 call for entries is now open. Please go to www.bioitworld.com.